Hello, good morning. My name's Louise. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're doing an update on uh, the seeds that I planted in a previous video, which was roughly about um, 10 days, maybe two weeks ago. And it's to show you the progress on the seeds that I planted, which were all Bangladeshi vegetable seeds. And I'm going to do a little repot as well. So today we're in a different room um, in my kitchen and you can just see at the back of me a little bit of my garden. Um, I think that's my banana tree there. That's a Musa Basju and it's been outside all winter. It's had some fleece wrapped around it but I took the fleece off about, ooh, about three four weeks ago now so it's been doing fine and I've got my golden bamboo there there's a palm tree in the middle a bit lower down and I don't think you can see but uh, maybe I'll show you later the large taro that I had in the front living room is now outside so fortunately we're not doing the video outside today because it's pretty wet and miserable out there we've had some lovely hot weather but um, that all things, good things come to an end, as they say. So um, we're doing the repot here. Um, it tends to be easier to do in the kitchen because I've got more space to do it. So let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to show you are the seeds that I put in the tray. And I'll just go through with you which ones um, I planted so this row here was the Malabar spinach and you can see there are two Malabar spinach that popped up there these um, seedlings in this tray took about a week I would say to come up um, so maybe a little bit over a week uh, before they appeared and had them on the windowsill in the front living room and there is a radiator below that windowsill so they got some warmth from that and uh, there's another one there that sort of strayed from its row here so the Malabar spinach is Puishak um, so that's I've got three of those so I think there was a couple more um, so I'm not sure what's happened to those and then this row here is the Kumra or um, it's it's similar to what we call a Kabaka squash um, which is like a green pumpkin with orange flesh inside so inside like any other pumpkin on the outside a green dark flesh and as they grow the leaves will look different from the bottle gourd which is what's popped up here so you can see there's one there and I've got another there and another one here I think I think that's also um, a bottle gourd as well so I've got four I think I planted about six in there I can't remember to be honest with you so all these came up at the same time the only ones that didn't materialize are the foita which I think is like the luffer gourd I'm not sure but they did not germinate so I'm not sure whether the seeds are bad seeds it could be you know that could be the reason so I'll put those down <coughs> excuse me this here is the sasinga which is uh, another type of gourd snake gourd they call it and so they popped up and they definitely need repotting as you can see the roots have come out well not coming out but you can see they're around the bottom <coughs> excuse me just lean over and I'm just going to get the um, the lubia so here is the lubia and we've got some nice roots on there and these came up within a few days so very quick to grow but whether they will actually produce any yard uh, the lubia is a yard long bean so that's what they're commonly known as and they typically grow in tropical climates or hot 
you know, hot, hot countries like Spain, Italy, you will get them in the Mediterranean. But, <clears throat> excuse me, um, these, I'm going to keep these indoors for as long as possible because I have grown them out outdoors in the past and they took forever and never produced anything. They just grew and grew. If you've got a, a polytunnel or a greenhouse, then I think that's the best place to put them. But I'm going to keep mine indoors for as long as possible and then when the weather gets really nice I will put them outside and I will repot them together in a larger pot and um, and I'll put bamboo canes in the pot and train them up um, so that they've got some support because they do need something they, you know, they climb like any other bean would so that's the lubia so they've got nice new leaves popping up there and that's those and here sadly this is the uri or the seam um, hyacinth bean now these popped up really quickly and the, the leaves did not look like this they were very healthy lovely green leaves and because I was running out of space in my front living room <coughs> excuse me I brought them here and this window gets the afternoon sun and I'm not sure whether water had dropped on here uh, mist and the sun came and it bleached or it, it burnt the leaves so I don't know what's happened there so I'm a little bit sad about that um, but as you can see there is new the new these are the true leaves the small ones that you can see I don't know if you can see there the little leaves right there so these are the true leaves and these are the like the primary leaves so hopefully these new leaves won't have any of this damage on them and um, they'll continue to grow healthily and I'll do the same I'll plant this in a larger pot together I'm not going to separate them put them in a larger pot and put the bamboo canes in and just tie them up so that they can trail up I will keep this indoors a little bit longer as I say hyacinth beans are not commonly grown here uh, unless you know amongst the Bangladeshi community they do grow them because the beans are edible they're nice to eat um, so yeah that's that's a worry unfortunately sad to say that they uh, got that uh, leaf scorch or you know it looks like a burn to it there are no pests or insects on there so I know it's not uh, related to that that's the uri and here let me give you a little shot of that that is the the dugi uh amaranth or lal shag depending on where you're from these are the little seedlings that um, I popped in actually in another tray with uh, the okra I'll show you the okra at the same time because they were together so okra the okra was in this well the okra is in that half and the, the doggy was in that half so when they came up I decided to lift these out because these came out a lot quicker than those and I put them in this larger tray and it's actually been in the greenhouse since they uh, germinated I put them straight out there because what I didn't want is for these to get too tall too quickly and the, the stems would be very weak um, so it's a bit cooler out there it's got plenty of light in my plastic greenhouse and you can just see that here um, so that's where they've been and I will be separating, I'll be taking clumps of this, I'll lift them and clumps of them I'll be putting in a trough that I've got out in the front and I will be doing a video on that when I do this. So yeah, please with that. And so I'll come back to the okra. There's the okra and some of the, you can see some of the 
the Dougie seeds are still in there, or one or two, but the okra all popped up and I will be lifting these and putting them, I'm going to show you what I will do, um, I'll put them in these plastic cups so I'll be lifting one and putting it in here so I might just do that now actually so give you an idea of how we do it. So what I'm using today is I've got Miracle Grow. That's compost I use, or I'll use a B&Q Verve, you know, the one that's in the purple bag, and that's just normal standard compost. And I will mix in some Budfish and Bone. Now, I usually do that when the plants are a little bit bigger. I don't do it at this stage because the roots are very delicate and this can burn but it is very very good for all your plants that are outdoor plants especially that um, you need to give them a little bit of a boost so blood fish and bone um, mix that in with your compost I just take a handful and if I've got a large tub a handful is adequate and just rake that in or use a trowel and mix it in so blood fish and bone and I also use to feed my indoor plants I use this miracle grow so that's um, good to give the plants a little bit of a boost as they're actively growing you dilute it you read the instructions on the back dilute it don't overfeed them because what you'll tend to get is um, too much um, fertilizer building up in the soil so unless your compost is really well draining and you can flush it out, um, I would just say maybe once every two weeks, give a dilute um, feed of your all your plants, basically your flowers, your chilies, okra, whatever you're growing. So what I'm going to do now to pop some compost in here, I'm just popping some compost. Right, and what I'll do is, um, actually I'll do the, the zinger, or sisinger. So I'm just going to literally get a teaspoon, I might just knock them out actually. So I'm just going to tap. There we go. Oops. So two health, healthy little ginger plants there. So I will so sort of get an idea of where you're going to put it like that. And just add some more compost around it. Now some people plant theirs right into a big pot, but I, I tend to see what what happens first. You know, I don't want to use up a big uh, tub of compost and find that none of my plants germinate. You know, and then I've wasted all that time. So there it is, potted up. And I'll give that a little drink of water. Now this pot doesn't have any holes in it. I'm not too minded. Some of my pots have got holes, some haven't. Um, and just water it and then I can keep an eye on the roots here. Once the roots have sort of filled this and the plant's a little bit bigger, I'm, I'll probably put a little stick in here as well, just to keep it from uh, flopping over, give it some support. So, finger. That's that done. And it's just a, a little update on some of my chilies. And that's a catamoris, which is probably a, ver a bird's eye um, chili that um, I grew. I grow these every year because I use a lot of green chilies in my cooking. So that's 
one of my green chilies. And I've got some, I've got a tray here of my RG lemon chilies, which is a lovely lemon coloured chilli, lemon citrusy taste, but it's also got some heat to it as well. So I grow these as well every year. Um, could do with a little bit of feeding, some yellowing on there. And I also, um, because there's not much light coming in, like today's quite grey day, uh, in the evening I will put, I'll put these grow lights on. So I'll just show you my grow lights here. I'll lift them up actually. So I've got these off eBay and they, I don't want to dazzle everybody, but I'll just switch them on. So yeah, you've got the option of two lights and the bendy. You can put them in different directions, overhanging something and there's a clip here that you just clip it onto for support and um, yeah not right above them so I give them a little bit of a distance say um, that much distance away from them just to give them an extra boost and you know so that they can catch up if I, I'm a little bit late this year with planting my seeds so that light will help them uh, to grow so um, that's it for today thank you for watching uh, we'll do a, a further update when I've repotted all of these and they've grown a little bit bigger and some of them will be outside some I will keep indoors until the weather's really you know hotted up out here um, I can just give you a little view of my back garden there you can see in the corner the giant um, taro or Alocasia macorrhiza is its proper name. Next to it is the golden bamboo. Um, and I've got some various cottage plants in there. Uh, in my plastic greenhouse, although we're not going out there, is, um, I've got some lettuce, kale, um, some flower seeds uh, planted up and not very visible but down past here I've got the uh, citrus um, are growing down there but I'll do that video another day when the weather's a bit better and we can have a little tour of that so thank you for watching um, hopefully you will subscribe to my channel uh, please press the like and subscribe button and hit the notifications bell and that will um, notify you when I've got a new video popping up. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.